Hello friends, it's Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead and this past week we had the privilege of getting to experience the eclipse in full totality from our own homestead. So I'd love to share that with you in this video. At the end I'm going to show you some of the great footage that Gabriel was able to capture on his camera. And of course, as with every gathering and activity that we have here on the homestead, I like to include fun food because food is my love language. So I thought I would share some fun eclipse themed foods that I made for the family for lunch on this day. And I know some of you won't get to make these for the eclipse, but some of these are sun themed and would be fun for a summer solstice gathering or something like that this summer. So let's go ahead and get into the recipes. As always with our baking, we're going to start by grinding down some fresh soft white wheat and we are going to turn these into some moon pies. I can't purchase moon pies from the store for my family. We need to make them from scratch so that they will be dairy free for my son who has an anaphylactic dairy allergy. So we're gonna start by measuring out four cups of this freshly ground flour. And to that, I'm gonna add one and a half cups of sugar. Now one teaspoon of salt, and then we're going to add two tablespoons of arrowroot powder. Don't worry, this recipe will be in the video description for you if you would like to recreate this for your family. I'm actually doubling the recipe that will be in the description for you. So stirring together all of our dry ingredients. Now we're going to add one cup of olive oil, just a little bit of molasses, a little bit of vanilla extract, just measuring that with our heart because that's what we do with vanilla. You can never really have enough of that, right? And now we need to add our eggs. So I'm going to add two whole duck eggs to this cookie mixture for the moon pies. But then I also am going to add two additional yolks. The yolks are going to go into the cookie portion of the moon pie and we're going to set aside the whites from those two eggs and those will be what we will use to make the marshmallow filling that will go inside of the moon pies. Uh, Store-bought moon pies basically just a couple of crack um, cookies with um, a marshmallow filling inside and then it's coated in chocolate. So that is what we are recreating here with this recipe. Now, typically the cookie portion of a moon pie would be more of like a graham cracker texture, but we are just kind of doing our own thing with this. I made up this recipe and we're just kind of <laughs> doing whatever we can here to make this work in our own dairy-free, freshly ground flour version. So getting all of those ingredients all mixed together, and then once we're ready, we're going to need to form these into our balls. Uh, each little ball of dough is going to be approximately two inches in diameter. We're going to get those on some parchment paper here. And then because this is freshly ground flour, it doesn't exactly spread out the way a typical cookie would. So I am going to take something, I didn't show this, and smash down these cookies a little bit. And that will work just fine. We want to get our round moon shape. We are going to bake these in the oven on 350 degrees for about, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes. And in the meantime, let's work on our marshmallow filling. So I'm starting out with about a half a cup of water. And then to that, I'm going to add two tablespoons of our beef gelatin that we purchased in bulk from Azure Standard. We're going to mix that together and set it aside and let that gelatin absorb the water and in the meantime, we'll get out our mixer here and we're going to add the rest of our ingredients. I'm going to do one cup of powdered sugar. I'm using my Bosch mixer and we're going to use the um, whip, the whisk feature in this to help whip up these marshmallows. Adding a little bit of vanilla extract, I have those two egg whites that we reserved from the cookie portion of the recipe. And now that the gelatin has absorbed the water, we're ready to add that to the rest of the ingredients. We'll just get the whisk on the top of the mixer and we're gonna go ahead and whip these up into marshmallow fluff. And this is what that looks like. This is different than my usual marshmallow fluff. I added the egg whites and I actually really like the texture of this. It will solidify a little bit more as it sits out for a while. So now that our cookies are done, I want them all to be the same exact shape. So I'm taking a biscuit cutter and cutting these. I know it looks a little messy, but we are going to reserve all of the extra pieces of cookies to use for something else. 
Now what we need to do while the cookies are cooling, we can't fill that with the marshmallow filling yet, we are going to make our chocolate coating for the outside of the moon pie. These are dairy-free chocolate chips that are sweetened with coconut sugar. I'm just adding a little bit of coconut oil to that, some vanilla extract, and we are going to get that melted down on the stove. Now that our cookies have cooled, this is what they look like. They're in those nice uniform shapes. So we're going to take one cookie and we're just going to put a dollop of that marshmallow filling on top of it. And then we will put another cookie on the top and set that aside. You have to be careful not to overfill the middle of this with too much of the fluff or the weight of the cookie is just going to force it out of the sides of the um, of the shape here and you're going to have a whole big mess. So just enough of that marshmallow filling, you know, to cover the inside of that cookie, but not so much that it's going to be overflowing here. So once we get all of those filled and ready to go, I'm taking my melted chocolate and we're just going to pour that over the top. Um, some people might pick the cookie up and dip it into the chocolate mixture, but that is a lot messier of an option. It's much easier just to drizzle the chocolate over the top of the cookie mixture and just make sure that you coat the whole um, cookie. I'm leaving two without chocolate because I have a couple people in my house that just don't like the taste of chocolate and they will prefer to eat their moon pie. Um, just the way it is without the, the coating on it. So this is what they look like while they are waiting to cool. That chocolate will harden and then we can get those stored up. Here's our leftover marshmallow fluff that we'll use for another food item later. And here are our cookie crumbs that we're also going to repurpose so none of that goes to waste. The next thing we're going to do is make some beautiful sun-shaped bread. I'm using my very well-loved pizza crust recipe here. You, you can see I definitely need to copy this over to a new clean uh, recipe card. But I will link this recipe in the video description. All I did with this is I left out the oregano and the onion powder that I would typically put in it for my pizza dough. We're just going to do a plain bread in this. I've got it in the mixer with the dough hook and then once it's done kneading for a little bit I'm just going to finish that with my hands until I get that dough to the right texture to get it rolled out and we will start shaping it into our sun shape. This pizza crust recipe is really easy. It doesn't need time to rise. It's going to work just well if we take it directly from kneading and roll it out like this and um, it doesn't need a rise time before we're going to bake it. It will rise in the oven, which is why I chose to use my pizza dough recipe instead of some of my bread recipes. I was trying to do this quickly on this day. So I'm going to take a bowl and place that in the center of my somewhat circle shape <laughs> that I made out of my pizza dough. And then I'm taking a pizza cutter and I'm just cutting my little sun ray shapes here. I'm trying to evenly cut them. And then once I get them all cut, we are going to twist those and those are going to become sort of our sun ray shapes. That is going to be really fun for the children. Now I could do a lot of things with this. I could actually make this a pizza and maybe put some um, pizza sauce in the middle and some toppings. I could um, add sweet toppings on top of this and make it like a fruit pizza. All I'm going to do for this is I'm going to give it an egg wash and then to stick with our sun theme later on we're going to put sun butter which is sunflower seed butter in the center of that. That just baked on 450 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes and it was all done. Now here are those cookie crumbs from the moon pies that I reserved and set aside. Those are not going to go to waste. I put those in my food processor and blended them down. We're going to add a little bit of olive oil to this and I'm just winging this here. I don't really have a recipe. I think this will make a really nice cookie crumb pie crust. So I have my pie dish here. We're going to go ahead and grease that up. And then we're going to press those cookie crumbs down into bo the bottom of this pie dish to form it into a crust. Since I only have enough of these crumbs to make one bottom crust, I had to look into all of my preserved pie crusts that I have and decide which one would make a good pie without a top crust. And what I had was a pumpkin pie filling. And the way that I preserve my pumpkin pie filling is by freeze drying all of the dry ingredients. So last fall, what I did is um, 
ran a bunch of the butternut squash and pumpkin that I grew last year, ran it through the freeze dryer, powdered it down, and then added all of the sugar and other dry ingredients that go into my pumpkin pie filling that I make and put that into a jar. And then when I want to make a pie filling, all I have to do is dump all of those dry ingredients into a bowl. And then all I have to add are my wet ingredients. It's really simple. Now, if I really wanted to get fancy, I could use freeze-dried powdered eggs and even powder up some of the milk and other things that are in the wet ingredients that I add to this. But just for simplicity's sake, I find it's easier to just powder the pumpkin and then add the sugar and other dry ingredients and spices and then just look how simple it is. You add a couple eggs, you add two cups of milk. I'm using almond milk. We mix that together and I like to mix it with a hand blender like this, an immersion blender, to really make sure any of those chunks of um, powdered up pumpkin, they all get broken up in there so you don't end up with a chunk of dry powder when you bite into your pumpkin pie. And then we are going to have to set this aside for a little bit and allow that uh, milk to absorb into all of those dry ingredients. You don't want to bake it right away. Let it sit for about 10 minutes before we're going to bake it. And we baked it on about 350 degrees and it took maybe about 40 minutes. And when it was done, we're going to put chocolate on this and I'll show you how that turned out in just a minute. We made a really big deal of this eclipse. As a homeschooling family, we just love opportunities like this to make science come alive for the children. So we spent a lot of time this week, um, or the week before actually, doing homeschool lessons with the children, reading books, talking about the solar system and how the sun and the moon function. And then Monday was just such a wonderful opportunity to make all of that learning come together for the children. And then, of course, we're going to celebrate all of our learning with some fun food. So here is that bread that we made, the sun bread. I just smothered some sunflower seed butter on the middle of it. Here's our pumpkin pie with that melted chocolate that we kind of tried to make into an eclipse shape. Just some deviled eggs because it's the time of year that we have lots of eggs to use up. And we needed some vegetables with this meal, so we went ahead and made that. Here is what those beautiful moon pies turned out to look like. They were amazing. The children absolutely loved these. And um, we will be making those again in the future. And then the leftover marshmallow fluff that we made made a wonderful fruit dip. And I just went ahead and cut up some fruit into the shape of a sun. I thought the children would love that. And so as a mother, one of my favorite things to do is kind of tying food to some of the memories that the children will have in events like this. I hope that it's these little details that I go to the effort to do that will really um, help them remember and feel loved and um, just make this experience all the more fun for them. So let's go ahead and get into the eclipse. So I have to say that everybody was hyping up the eclipse, people that had been through it in 2017, and I really didn't understand the hype. I thought it was cool that it was going to be in our backyard, so we were happy to be able to experience it. But I didn't understand why people would travel so far to see something like the eclipse. It just really didn't make sense to me. And now I have to say, after having had experienced it, it was it lived up to the hype and then some. And Adam and I are already talking about um, doing it, like traveling to an eclipse. I think in 2045, it'll be in Florida and all of our children will be grown. <laughs> so we're going to do it then. Um, Adam is sprinkling some grass seed. We were spending all the time outside working up to totality and I had Adam working on his honeydew list while we were outside so you can see our yard is just a disaster um, because of the cellar project that we did last year and we didn't want to plant seed until we knew they were done doing the septic project and the septic updates that need done so we've decided since they're not going to be doing the septic project this summer we're going to go ahead and lay grass seed so I don't have to live with mud <laughs> for the rest of this summer last year was enough so I'll talk a little bit about how the animals reacted to the eclipse. Um, they basically, the cows and the dogs, it was like nothing happened. The cows might got, have gotten a little bit loud, but they just were out there in the pasture eating even during totality. Now the chickens did go into their coops once it started to get dark 
and the roosters definitely were crowing a lot, like they were confused. Um, but otherwise, I, we didn't really notice a lot. We noticed the wild birds really were flying around a lot just a couple minutes before totality happened, almost like they were all going home to their nests or something like that. But we spent the whole hour and a half leading up to totality outside really just trying to keep these three little boys from blinding themselves that was the most stressful part of it all um, but just watching the sun slowly begin to be covered by the moon until suddenly it started to get really cold you can see adam kind of shivering the wind sort of picked up and the temperature dropped what felt like almost 10 degrees and then once that happened, we started to notice that the sky was getting darker in our southwestern corner of the horizon. And literally once we started noticing it getting darker in that corner within what felt like a minute, suddenly the darkness just came up over us and it was just the strangest feeling for it to become so dark literally out of nowhere. But I think the most amazing thing about the whole eclipse was the fact that once it reached totality, there was a 365 degree sunset, the twilight. So it's like you could see where the moon had cast a shadow directly over the top of us, but all around us, everywhere else, they were still in sunlight and you could see that. So I'm going to pan around and kind of show you what that horizon looked like. And in that moment of totality, we were able to take off the glasses and look up at the sun for the first time in our lives, actually stare directly at the sun. And I can't describe what that felt like in this moment right here that I'm panning. It was surreal. It felt like time kind of stood still. It felt like this weird kind of primal connection to I don't know. It was spiritual in a way. And I know that sounds crazy, but I think people who experience totality will understand that. And so Gabriel, I'm switching to his footage here. His camera was able to zoom in and show you what we were able to see without our glasses. And when we looked up, this is the view that we saw. And I think what was so amazing about this is eclipse is that in the bottom of the shadow you can see this re bright red spot and it's a prominence it's the, actually the plasma from the sun that you can see there and just i don't know maybe somebody else probably felt the same way or maybe i'm just strange it just the whole thing was just romantic and surreal and spiritual i just want to experience it again and adam and i definitely want to go in the future when we don't have to be stressed out about keeping children from blinding themselves and go and experience it again um, from a different perspective, not from the perspective of a parent. You can see that that star underneath the sun that is Venus that you could actually see in the sky and we thought that was pretty cool too. Thankfully, Miss Hannah was oblivious to what was going on. We didn't have to worry about her looking up at the sun at all and hurting her eyes because she had no idea that an eclipse was happening. It's kind of like the animals. She just kept doing what she was doing. And then um, the rest of us just walked around. We were in totality for about three minutes, a little over three minutes. I wish it would have been longer, um, but that three minutes was amazing. We just walked around. We observed the animals. We just took it in. I loved listening to the children and seeing the awe that is on their faces. I mean, Elizabeth here, she's just, if I had the sound on, you would hear them exclaiming. And then just as soon as um, it started, it the sun started peeking out like this and it was over. And then everything got light again. The animals started making a little bit more noise. And then we had another hour and a half where um, the sun moved away and it got back to full brightness outside. I hope those of you who weren't able to experience the eclipse enjoyed this little peek into what it was like for us. We'll be back next week with one of our more normal videos. Until then, I hope you guys have a great week. Um, be blessed, friends. Bye.